What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 Chevy Trax, courtesy of Sioka Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So I'm excited for this one because this is an extremely affordable compact SUV. You also have some new colors for the 2025 model year as well. And in case you were curious, this one is going to compete with the Moss, the CX-30, Volkswagen Town, Subaru, Crosstrek, just to name a few. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so, as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2025 tracks. First one being the LS, starting at $21,495. One RS for $23,395. LT for $23,595. That's the trim that we have today. Active for $25,395. And lastly, the 2RS going for $25,395. So, regardless of the trim level that you go with, though, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the little beast is a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder, putting out 137 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 162 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,500 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through a six speed automatic, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.8 .8 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city. 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 chevy tracks here up to speed all right found our straightaway here in three two one go turbo leg there it is oh my gosh there it is <laughs> It's okay. It's not bad. That was hilarious, actually. Uh, so there was a little bit of turbo lag. It is a turbocharged three-cylinder after all, so that is to be expected. But once it kicks in, it started spinning. It started spinning the front wheels. So having said that, probably wouldn't have minded an all-wheel drive availability for this one, just because that is, you know, it's power being sent to the front wheels. You're going to spin a little bit, but um, still, I think if you add all-wheel drive, it is going to boost the price, obviously. So they're trying to keep the price down. I get that, but I would just have it as an option because it does tend to snow every now and then in PA. But having said that, it's actually not that bad of an acceleration. So I didn't mind that, just a little bit of spinning. But anywho, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.6 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 116 feet, which is a sports sedan number. That is brilliant number. As far as the braking feel goes, it's definitely on the firm side of things. I will say that. So I love it. I think the braking feels wonderful on the tracks. And the 116 foot number typically in compact SUVs you find kind of mid 120s so 116 feet that's typically what you find in sports sedan so 100% braking is definitely on point in the tracks but the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back compound crank rear suspension as far as ride quality goes you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road it is a compact SUV so um, it's pretty much on par for the course, though. It's it wouldn't. It's not something that would personally bother me. As far as steering feel goes, it's a little bit on the looser side of things. Wouldn't have minded a little bit more of a firm steering feel or heavy steering feel in this thing, but it gets the job done nonetheless. As far as cabin noise goes, you get a little bit of road noise, but again, it's kind of like I'm comparing this to a compact car because it's in the same price range. It's kind of like that. So I would compare this to like a Honda Civic. That's basically what the cabin noise is like. Then touching our rear visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely shouldn't have any issues there, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Chevy Trax. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Chevy Trax, finished in a new color available for 2025 called Cypress Gray. I like it. It's kind of like a dark kind of gray green. I think it looks dang good, especially in the sun. But anyways, the other new color for 2025 is Marina Blue Metallic, in case you wanted one of the latest and greatest color options for this year. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the tracks is made, because this is actually going to surprise you guys. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Chevy Trax is not built and assembled here in the U.S., but rather South Korea. 
interesting like hyundai and genesis and kia and all those so that's pretty darn interesting if you ask me you would think it'd be made in uh if anything mexico or the u.s something like that so i don't know i like that i like i i trust the korean so i think they do good but starting up front you will find a black front grille coming standard across the board it's going to be uh rs lettering for the rs trim levels of course gold bow tie logo can be found with the ls and lt trim levels but then a black bow tie logo can be found with the active and rs trim levels unless you have some options making them into black kind of like we have today so anyways led headlights do come standard across the board for all trim levels as well you get led daytime running lights for the lt trim level and up also with that you get the automatic feature and automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there so definitely a safety feature in itself there but i love the front end of this one i think it looks so dang good but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the tracks here, roof rails do come standard on the LT trim level and up. That's why we got them. Rear privacy glass coming standard across the board. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are power adjustable across the board. Of course, they're gonna either be finished in a body colored finish or gloss black, depending upon the trim level that you go with. And they will be heated for the 1RS trim level and up. And then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the LS, 18 inch black painted alloys for the 1RS and active trims, 17 inch gray painted alloys for the LT, that's what you guys are looking at of course, and then 19 inch black painted alloys for the 2RS, but again, very nice looking side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, that's not even a shark fin antenna. That's a that's a legit antenna up top there. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. No LED taillights, unfortunately, would have liked to have seen them, but you do have some trim level badging found on the rear tailgate there. And just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away underneath on the driver's side there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the tracks, so when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. So simply just lift up on the back there and open it up. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 25.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 54.1 cubic feet then. There is some cargo lighting back there. There's gonna be a cargo cover for the LT trim level and up. There's some chrome plated tie down anchors. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat, which you guys know I love to see. So then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 38.7 inches. For reference, I mean, even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there so no issues for me no rear center armrest with cup holders or anything like that but there are dual rear usb charging ports for the lt trim level and up and it's the usb a and usb c so something for everybody there so i do like that they're there though because if you compare that to like the civic and the corolla they don't always get those so it's pretty cool so they make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable front seats for the ls one rs and lt trims eight-way power driver seat for the active and 2RS trim levels, cloth seating for the LS and 1RS, Evo Tex upholstery for the LT trim level and up, heated front seats then for the 1RS, 2RS, and active trims. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was fine. Nothing crazy, but didn't have any issues in my short little test drive here today. Then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It's going to be wrapped in urethane for the LS and LT trims, leather wrapped for the 1RS, 2RS, and active, and then heated for the active and 2RS trim levels. Again, no issues there. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Chevy bow tie logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock that circular button. That is going to be your remote start that comes on the 1RS trim level and up. So you can warm this thing up on super cold days in Pennsylvania, quite unlike today. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot at the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the center air vents there. And so once started up, eight inch digital gauge cluster will come standard for the LT trim level and up. 
Otherwise, you're going to get analog gauges. But I think the gauges look pretty darn good. You got a digital speedometer front and center, and uh, the RPMs kind of surround that. Uh, you got your fuel information all the way to the bottom left there, and uh, trip A, trip B to the bottom right. So it's actually pretty darn good, especially considering the price point, the fact that you get digital gauges. I think that's a win in my book. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof is available. It doesn't come standard on any particular trim, though. Wireless phone charger, another one of those that's available if you wanted it. Automatic climate control coming for the LT trim level and up, meaning just set a temperature and it's going to automatically hit that for you. So that is pretty cool. Uh, just underneath of that climate control, you got a little bit of rubberized storage, a couple USB charging ports, and a 12 volt power outlet. Just behind that, you got your cup holders and a little cell phone slot in the middle. I think that's pretty cool. Electromechanical mechanical parking brake, a little more storage, and then within the center armrest, it's actually a pretty deep center armrest here. So, decent amount of storage in there. I think my favorite part about the inside, though, the first thing I noticed when I got in this one is this highlighter yellow accents that can be found uh, just above the passenger side glove box on the driver's side air vent as well and then you have highlighter yellow contrast stitching found through the doors i think that's a pretty cool little added touch and you get a little bit of contrast stitching on these seats themselves as well so i love the highlighter yellow there's nothing wrong with a little pop of color so i think it looks dang good but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. There's a couple different options here. So eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come on the LS and One RS. And then an 11 inch color touchscreen display is gonna come on the LT trim level and up. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. The thing I don't like about the infotainment screen though is the icons to the left. I have no idea what they are. Now I know I would probably get used to them, but Typically when you go into infotainment screens and vehicles, they have icons that are familiar because they use the same icons on your phone and your tablets and things like that. But these are fresh icons, like who knows what these things are. So it looks like there's a, a rectangle that is supposed to be a phone. That's for your Bluetooth information. There's a traction control, it looks like, with the tire. I guess the next one down is your trip A and trip B stuff, and then uh, just a bunch of random stuff. I don't even know what shape that is for like climate control and Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, stuff like that. So it's it's just different. It's, it's random and it's different. So it might take a little bit of getting used to, but anyways, you can check out your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find four speakers for the LS and One RS, and then six speakers for the LT trim leveling up. So having said that, we got the six speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, that was that was a six speaker sound system. <laughs> it kind of felt like that, honestly. Not a ton of bass. Maybe it was partly the song. I don't know. But yeah, not a ton of bass. Clarity was okay. It's what's to be expected with a six speaker sound system. I'll just put it that way. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the tracks in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, forward collision alert, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, following distance indicator, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, and a teen driver mode as well. That's pretty cool. Prevents your teen driver from turning off the safety features. If they were to do that, it gets logged in the system so you know about it, so kind of cool. Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the tracks, I think the best thing about this car is how ridiculously affordable it is for a compact SUV. It's the same price as the compact cars that it's not really even competing against, which makes it a pretty darn good value because it offers more space for the same, if not less price than the compact car. So that's kind of cool. Pretty darn good rear legroom as well for this segment. I liked that. Very good looking SUV, especially in this new color that we have with us here today. I think the looks are 100% spot on. As far as room for improvement goes, it is a bit slow, um, but that's to be expected in a car like this. It's just about as fast as like a, uh, I don't know, a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla, I guess. So it's, it's not meant to be fast, it's what it is. And the only other thing I can possibly think about if I'm looking to buy a vehicle like this would be the reliability or potential reliability in the future because it is a turbocharged three cylinder. And you, I don't know, turbocharged engines in general are less reliable than their naturally aspirated counterparts. 
But you add to that a three cylinder as well. I just don't know what the reliability is gonna be. Check out Consumer Reports. I didn't even look into that. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the tracks in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>